Good morning, Aldersgate Online family and friends. We are so excited that you have decided to join us today. Here at uh, the, the church, we are having a baptism, and we are so excited for this. This is uh, one of the things that we do is, is with infants is we baptize them and bring them into covenant with God. It's an exciting day, so we are looking forward to this. But I also want to draw your attention to some of the announcements. We're doing Captain Underpants, which I understand you may already know about that. Uh, full information on the website. Uh, you can email us from the website to get uh, further information or call the church office if you need it. If you need prayer or an encouraging word, please uh, feel free to contact us through the website. And that address is aldersgatenorfolk.org. So we're so excited for today's message. What is baptism and what is its purpose? So stay tuned. And we'll see you next week. And I think we have a seat now. I'm sorry. We have a seat now. We're going to have a solo. Christine's going to play us a solo on the piano for our special music. So if you just sit back and listen, please. Yeah.
All right, so who set the example for us for baptism? Jesus. If you remember in Luke chapter 3, that it, it, it tells of the baptism of Jesus. One day when the crowds were being baptized, Jesus himself was baptized. As he was praying, the heavens opened and the Holy Spirit in bodily form descended upon him like a dove. And a voice from heaven said, you are my dearly beloved son and you bring me great joy. Parents, I want you to know today that when we baptized Axel, the heavens were open and the Holy Spirit descended upon him to seal him into God's covenant that we will raise him. He will be, it's called pervenient grace, John Wesley would put it, that God will work in his life until the day he decides to serve the Lord all the days of his life. And so when the heavens open, the Lord this morning says to you all, and to the grandparents, to the family, you are my dearly beloved children, and I am well pleased with you. He is pleased with your decision today to honor him and to bring Axel into the covenant of his love, of his mercy, and his grace. And so we are, again, blessed to have experienced this with you this morning. And, and we ask, what is baptism? What exactly is it? What does it do? Baptism is the outward sign of an inward grace. When you came to Christ, you were circumcised, not by a physical procedure. Christ performed a spiritual circumcision, the cutting away of your sinful nature. For you were buried with Christ when you were baptized, and with him you were raised to new life because you trusted the mighty power of God who raised Christ from the dead. And when Axel gets old enough, he will decide that this is what he believes and will serve the Lord. So what is baptism? It's the beginning of our heavenly citizenship. Philippians 1.27 says, Above all, you must live as citizens of heaven, conducting yourselves in a manner worthy of the good news of Jesus Christ. Did you know that was part of your baptism? That we are to conduct ourselves in a manner worthy of the good news. So it makes sense to know the good news. Amen? Amen. And how do we know the good news? Reading the Bible, coming to church, studying the Bible. That's how we learn the good news. It's the beginning of our life as a child of God. Romans 8, 14. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. And it's the beginning of our life in the Spirit. Romans 8, 11. The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. Did you know that this morning? The Spirit of God that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. The question is, how often do we tap into the Holy Spirit? How often do we recognize that that power is in us? How often do we talk to the Holy Spirit and say, thank you, equip me today, guide me in all wisdom. I don't know about you, but I'm excited about the power of the Holy Spirit living within me because this life is hard. Anybody? We cannot make it through this life successfully as Christians without relying on the power of the Holy Spirit. And so as just as God raised Christ from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies by the same Spirit living within you. The more mature I get, the more life I need in my body. Amen. <laughs> the more strength I need. I need the Holy Spirit to quicken my body, to strengthen me so that I can serve him. It's all about serving the Lord, loving him and making him known. And we need help to do that. I don't know about you, but I'm not perfect. I'm not always crossing my T's and dotting my I's. When I'm driving in that traffic, sometimes I get a little irritated just like you do. I don't do the finger wave, but I do 
get aggravated, be wrapped and full, you know? And so I need the power of the Holy Spirit working in me. I told you, you know, you get into Walmart, you get in line, and, and, and you're just cutting me because you don't want to wait that long. Now somebody's got 50 bazillion things and you got three. You don't want to wait that long line. I, I get it. But our attitude and how we respond and live is going to take relying on the power of the Holy Spirit. And it's the beginning of our life in spiritual warfare. Ephesians 6, 12 tells us, for we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies. I told y'all, you don't look to the person next to you if they're not your enemy. But against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world. Against mighty powers in this dark world and against evil spirits in heavenly places. When you and I were baptized, the whole spiritual world was notified that now we have become a child of God. Axel has now become a child of God. All of the spiritual world has been put on notice. He belongs to the Lord. You and I belong to the Lord. And let me tell you, there will be a fight for his life spiritually. There will be a fight for their marriage. The enemy would love nothing else but to destroy them and divide them and cause divorce. But that's why we're here, church, to stand with them, to pray for them. We have got to be on our knees praying for one another. There is a spiritual war going on for the lives of our children, for the life of the church. And we have got to be in prayer. And if you don't know what that is, show up Wednesday. We'll talk about it. Or meet me after church. Because it is a serious time that we're living in. And if you know your Bible, you know, you see the signs of the times are being fulfilled in our generation. And so we have got to be on our mark. We have got to be on target. We have got to be intentional. We have got to focus. And we got to laugh, too. <laughs> Don't forget to laugh. The enemy's a liar. I like to do the Jesus dance. Anybody do the Jesus dance? He's stomping on the enemy's head. He's a liar. He can't have that family. We have claimed them for the glory of God. Amen. We have got to stand together and pray for one another because there is a spiritual warfare taking place. And it's been taking place way back when. And from the very beginning of time. And so, we have got to stand strong, stand together against this dark world. You know, I told y'all that we have three, I didn't tell you we had three enemies. I only talked to you about the devil. But we have three enemies, the world, the devil, and ourselves. We can mess ourselves up just as good as anybody else. Anybody besides me? <laughs> We get off track, we get sidetracked, we get uh, distracted. The enemy loves to distract us. That's why we have got to be in prayer. We've got to be on our knees. We've got to be reading God's word. And we've got to show up for church. I heard somebody the other day, oh, yeah, that's happening next Sunday. Hey, we need to put that on our schedule. I've never heard of anybody scheduling an event uh, to come to church. Have you? <laughs> it's just something that's in us as Christians that we do because we need each other. We need to come together and worship. We need to, to let the word of God wash over us, wash off all that disappointment and all that negativity that we experience out in the world. Because the world wants to divide us. It wants to distract us. But we have got to put blinders on and say, Lord, protect me from Leaning to the left or leaning to the right. And I don't mean politically. I'm talking spiritually. I want to be focused on you, Lord. I want to be focused on what you called me to do. So that when those teenagers show up on Thursday night and mom says, will you pray for us? We'll know what to pray. Or a, a member that came to the Civic League yesterday and said, you know what? I don't have a church home. I don't even know if I want one. Would you pray for me? When we're out and about the world, we got to be spiritually tuned to hear what people are 
are saying. What people are needing. We're the answer because we have Jesus. We have his love. We know about his mercy and his grace. It is not a time to back away, although it can get scary out there. But stand firm in all that you know to do. And let Christ use you to minister to others. You don't have to worry about what you say. Scripture tells us that the Holy Spirit will give us what we are to say when we are to say it. That's a promise. I love that because I, I'm not one that can answer right off the top of my head. I, I like to stand there and think about it for a minute. Or sometimes I'll say, you know, let me get back to you. That's okay. Say, let me get back to you. I'd rather get back to you and have a thoughtful answer than to just throw out something. Let me get back to you. We have the good news that God is good and that he is faithful, that he is merciful and he is kind. The world needs to hear that. Our neighbors need to hear that. That person sitting next to you at work needs to hear that, or more importantly, needs to see that in your life. Let them see a smile on your face. You know, when days I get up and I'm in discouraged, you know what I do? Because I can walk around with my head down too. I start saying, thank you, Lord. When my mama passed away, I started into deep depression. My mom, I was the only girl. My mom and I were best friends, and then she's gone. I was only 48. And I started into deep depression, and I, I said, Lord, I don't know what I'm going to do. He said, praise me. Thank you. For the time that you have her. And with a broken heart, I begin to say, Thank you, Lord. Thank you that I had her for 48 years. Thank you that we were able to be together the last seven. Thank you. And as I begin to thank the Lord for my mom and all the times that He allowed me to be with her and minister to her and, and she ministered to me, that depression broke off my life. And once again, I can praise the name of the Lord. Once again, I can hold my head up high. When you're having a tough time, be thankful. You know, I drive here three, four times a week, and I thank the Lord. Lord, thank you that I can see the change you know the leads. Lord, thank you that I can hear this praise music on the radio. Thank you, Lord, that I got a car that's running. Got one in the shop, and this one's got an engine light on. But thank you, Lord, that you're getting me there safely and back home safely. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. We've got a lot to be thankful for. We've got a lot to be thankful for. Amen. 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 Even my grandmother, when she said, you know, I just don't know what the Lord wants me to do. She was 94, and plus, when she sat in a rocking chair, she looked perfect. But when she got up the walk, she was bent over like this. I said, Nemo, thank the Lord that you can sit there and pray for us because I know it was the prayers of my grandmother that is the reason why I am where I'm at today. I was not always walking the Christian life. And I venture to say some of you weren't either. But through God's grace, his prevenient grace, through her prayers, he weaved my life and brought me to this point where we are together. I thank God for that. I don't know what he wants us to do together, but I know he wants to do something. And I know he's already begun with these spaghetti dinners. People are coming, and they're coming back, and they're asking for prayer. Praise God. That's what it's all about. Amen. Building relationships with people and praying for them. That they're comfortable enough to say, will you pray for me? We've got the answer. His name is Jesus. Amen. Amen. Today, I invite you to remember your baptism. We're gonna, I'm going to ask some strong, healthy men to come help me move this down here so you can walk by as we watch and listen to this song that we're going to play and touch the waters and remember your baptism.
Remember the good news. Remember that Jesus loves you and saved you for such a time as this. Would you come and remember your baptism?
needed a baptism for Axel. And I want to invite you, the family of God, to come and bless them, shake their hand, give them a hug, whatever they're comfortable with, so that uh, they will know you love them as much as I do. Hey, precious, you did so well. Did you did? Yeah. You want to come on with me? Yeah, you did. He's like, what? Receive this benediction. Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's grace be upon you and give you peace in Jesus' name. Amen. There will be a short nominations committee meeting right up here if you'll join me uh, in just a few minutes. Treat you over.